Okay, good afternoon. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dippin. I'm here at Pharma Plus, and I have the, today the pleasure to talk to you about vitamin D. Now, what we've purposely done here is that we've um, we, we tried to avoid the, the the sort of common topics, things like cold and flu, um, head lice, those sorts of things. You know, we, we're trying to avoid those sort of things and try to. Um, look at um, areas that you may not necessarily be very familiar with. Now, this presentation is just as good for pharmacists as it can be for counter staff and technicians, so feel free to share this if you if you so wish. Um, and this topic is actually very relevant for this time of year. It's sort of like hitting September now in 2016, and so we're approaching the autumn stroke winter time now where this topic is going to be very relevant. So the idea is, is that it's going to be quite relevant to you, but also there's going to be some strategies at the end that you can use to help your, your patients and, and also help your business at the same time as well. And the sort of things we'll be looking at are four things. We'll be looking at what vitamin D is and what it does. Uh, we'll be looking at recent guidance. We'll be looking at risk groups. And we're looking at some of the products that are available. And to top it off, what we're going to finally finish on is what you can do um, to help your patients in your pharmacy. Okay, so let's move on. So what is uh, vitamin D and what does it do? Um, I want to refer you to. Oops, sorry, start again. I want you to. I want to refer you to this piece of guidance here by Public Health England. That's what PHE stands for. Um, and it was released in 2016. Okay, so it's quite relevant. And the extracts that follow are from this article. So if you want to see the original source, it's here. But let's look at some of the extracts that I've taken from it. Basically, vitamin D protects bone and muscle health. Everyone needs vitamin D to an average daily intake of 10 micrograms. Now later on we'll be talking about what 10 micrograms means in, in, in reality. It regulates the amount of calcium and phosphate in the body, both needed for healthy bones and muscles. Um, I'll talk about SAG and SACN in a minute, but, they, but this um, organization reviewed um, the relationship between vitamin D and non-muscular skeletal health outcomes, including cancer, type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis and heart disease, but found insufficient evidence to draw firm conclusions. So basically what's that saying is that it probably does not affect these areas, um, although there isn't enough evidence to point either way. So it could, it might not. Okay. Now, nice... Um, uh, guidance was also released in 2014. I'll just click on that link and I'll show that to you as well. Okay, so this is what you want to look at. This is this is it here. Um, and in it, what it said was the national survey suggests that around a fifth, that's you know about 20% of adults, and between 8 to 24% of children may have low vitamin D status. So think about it: one in every five adults that comes into your pharmacy or between 1 in 10 to 1 in 4 children that come into your pharmacy have probably got low vitamin D levels. Quite a large number. Okay, so let's look at some of the recent guidance. Now, in that Public Health England guidance, um, again, I'm going to quote from there directly. It says that spring and summer, the majority of the population get vitamin D through sunlight on the skin and through a healthy, balanced diet. However, this is the reason why we did this presentation at this time. During autumn and winter, everyone will need to rely on dietary sources of vitamin D. If you're not aware, vitamin D is 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 um, is, is helped uh, is created um, by by sunlight as well on the skin. And obviously, during autumn and winter, um, there's not much light outside, and hence the levels of vitamin D go down. Now, it is difficult to meet the 10 microgram recommendation from consuming foods naturally containing or fortified with vitamin D. Um, and also, people whose skin has little or no exposure to the sun, like those in institutions such as care homes or, the, or, or who always cover their skin when outside, risk vitamin D deficiency and need to take a supplement throughout the year. Additionally, it states that ethnic minority groups with dark skin from African and Afro-Caribbean and South Asian backgrounds may not get enough vitamin D from the sunlight in the summer, therefore should consider taking a supplement all year round. 
And also it goes on to a little bit about children as well. Children aged one to four years should have a daily intake of around about 20, so 10 micrograms of vitamin D. And all babies under one should have a daily um, 8.5 to 10 microgram vitamin D supplement. Um, the exception to this rule is children who are um, formula, felt, for formula fed um, and who are feeding more than 500 mils of formula a day um, do not need additional vitamin D as their formula already is um, fortified with it. Okay, so there's quite a lot there. And again, if you want a bit more information, it's all in that Public um, Health England article that, that I put up earlier on. Let's look at some of the at-risk groups. Now, in that nice guidance I showed you, and I'll show you where it is, bear with me, I'll show you where it is. There you go. It's, uh, it's literally taken from there. Uh, here we are, from here. Okay. In that article, it gives you some at-risk groups. So groups that you need to be particularly careful of around this time of year. Infants and children under and aged under five years, pregnant or breastfeeding women, particularly teenagers and young women, over 65, people who have low or no exposure to the skin, for example, those who cover the skin for cultural reasons or are housebound or confined indoors for long periods, and also people who are um, with darker skin, for example, people of African, um, Afro-Caribbean and South Asian family origins will, will are particularly at risk from, from low vitamin D levels. Okay. Now, let's make um, some, some recommendations now. So I'm going to give you some dietary sources of vitamin D that, uh, that you can get through through natural means. So, for example, things like liver. You've got things like uh, fish, oily fish in particular. You've got things like egg yolks, things like red meat. Uh, you've got cereals which are fortified, fat spreads, those sorts of things, margarines in particular that are fortified with vitamin D. So these are diet, potential dietary sources of vitamin D that you can recommend to your um, patients. What you need to bear in mind, let me just take that bit off, sorry. What you need to bear in mind is, is that um, you may not be familiar with the number of micrograms in your vitamin D preparations. And sometimes a um, something called IUs are used, international units. Now, as a... Um, as a sort of general conversion, 40 IU is the equivalent of around about 1 microgram. So therefore, 10 micrograms is the equivalent of around about 400 IU. And that's the reason why a lot of the preparations that you'll see contain 400 IU. And if you want to find out a little bit more, I've, again, I put a link in. It's to um, an NHS guidance um, around multiple sclerosis. But you can have a look at it. And... Uh, uh, I'll see if I can find where where I found that from. Bear with me. Here you go. So 400 IU, 10 micrograms per, of, um, per adult per day. Okay, so a lot of the preparations that you'll see are for, at 400 IU, which is the same as 10 micrograms, which is the same as what your daily intake should be. Um, there is also something called healthy start vitamins. Now, a number of um, pharmacies and outlets provide this, and you may want to consider this. Um, the NHS is supporting um, specific people to get uh, recommended uh, vitamin levels. And examples are pregnant women, women um, with a child under 12 months of age, and children aged between 6 to 4 years who are receiving Healthy Start vouchers are entitled to free Healthy Start vitamins. Now, these vitamins contain A, C, and D, and are for children aged from 6 months to 4 years, and folic acid and vitamin C and D for pregnant and breastfeeding women. And, it's, and it then goes into uh, the, the, the amount. So children's vitamins contain around about 8-7.5, while the women's vitamin contain around about 10 micrograms. And if you want to find out a little bit more, you know, this is there's a little poster here. I've got a little um, link in there for you, which you can click on, uh, and you can, you can read this at your own leisure, a little bit more about healthy start vitamins there as well. Um, it may be an idea to, to consider stocking this, and I'll tell you how to go about that later. Oops, wrong one. Let's click on that. That's what you want. Okay, now the other thing you could do is um, you could just simply Google vitamin D 400 IU UK into Google, and you'll come up with a number of potential um, supplements there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly do that. Okay, so I'm going to say, oops, here we are. I'm going to go into and say, what was it again? I was going to say, bear with me. 
There you go, vitamin D 400 IU. Let me just uh, click on that. Copy. I'll just open up a new tab. Here we are. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste that in there. There you go. And what you should find is a whole host of um, items that you can use. If my web browser decides it doesn't want to crash, here we are. Okay, fine. So I'm going to go into images. Okay, uh, probably not the best one to use. Let's try. My apologies here. Okay, well, I'm not going to go into that, but you can see um, what you could do. You can actually get a whole host of different vitamins here that you can have a look at at your own leisure. Oh, here we are. Okay, so uh, here you go. So you've got a whole different range of vitamins that you can look at. Um, and you can look at the pictures in case you want to buy some or in case you want to stock them as well. Okay. Now... Let's move on. Let's think about um, dose initiation. Now, a lot of the time, a patient will go to a doctor and they will have incredibly low levels of vitamin D. In which case, what they might do is they might get a massive loading dose and then be put on to something called a maintenance dose. Okay, so where a rapid correction of vitamin D is required, such as those in patients with symptomatic disease, or about to start treatment with potent anti-resorptive agents, things like um, zolendronate and, 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 and other things as well, what you would need to do is you need to give a fixed loading dose followed by a regular maintenance therapy. And the loading dose um, is approximately 3,000 IU. It goes quite a lot, given either as separate weekly or daily doses over a period of 6 to 10 weeks, then a maintenance dose of around about 800 to 2000 IU. Okay. Um, where correcting, so where correction of vitamin D deficiency is less urgent or co prescribing with oral anti resorptive can start on a maintenance therapy without loading doses. And also, remember at risk groups, they are recommended 10 micrograms or 400 IUs of vitamin supplements a day. So, this is where you could potentially come in. Okay, these ones here probably you'll be relying upon the doctor to do for you. Um, you'll, you'll be relying upon prescriptions, but here you've got a massive patient audience here that you can support. And if you want a bit more information about where I got that, you can have a look at um, an article which I put a link on called Pulse Today. Um, my apologies, my computer is incredibly slow today and it doesn't want to. Right, here we are. Okay, and um, that article there goes over a number of different things relating to, to vitamin, and this is where um, that, that bit there was taken from. Okay. So, what can you do? Quite a few things in actual fact. You can probably figure out what you can do. First of all, general diet advice. We've gone over some of the sort of things that you can suggest to your patients especially coming around about this time of year. You could potentially become stockists of Healthy Start Vitamins and there's a telephone number here that you can ring 0844-991-2222 to register an interest. And I'll just click on that and um, I'll show you what it looks like. There you go. So this is uh, this is the number here that you can ring up on and uh, um, and, and, and they should hopefully be able to register you should you should you wish to um, stock those items. Okay, target your at-risk groups. We discussed that earlier, people in care homes, people who are covered up for a lot of the period of time, um, Asians, people with dark, um, darker skins, those sorts of people you really ought to be targeting, especially this time of year. Obviously, you're going to be dispensing a lot of medication. We would also suggest that you check your local policies and work collaboratively with the GPs to identify these types of people which have got, uh, who have got uh, low vitamin D levels. And finally, point of care testing. Now, um, when I started this presentation off, I, I, I could swear that there was a machine out there that, that could 
monitor vitamin D levels very, very quickly. Um, unfortunately, when I did my research, I couldn't actually find one on the UK market. There are some in America, but nothing here that I can see. So I have a feeling that this is something that is probably going to be coming up in the future. So it's worthwhile um, thinking about this. Okay, point of care testing for vitamin D levels. And that could then naturally fit in with um, you know, your healthy start vitamins and also some of the vitamin D that you are likely to stock in your pharmacy as well. You can, you can support the sales of those too. So hopefully this will, has given you a, a, a good idea of uh, vitamin D gen. There's some, of the, some things that you can do in your own pharmacy. Um, if you've got any questions, you can always email us at info at farmplusltd.co.uk. Um, and if you're a Farm Plus member, you just give us a um, just drop us a line, and we'll send you a hard copy of this presentation with all the hyperlinks, so you can um, read those primary source articles at your own leisure. Okay, so thank you very much for your time, and um, um, hopefully your your vitamin D sales will go up, and hopefully the the um, health of your patients regarding vitamin D will also go up at the same time. Yeah. Good luck now. Take care. Bye bye.